quite a time now I'm talking about the technological disturbance and uh, the wisdom that it brings and today I will uh, mention about malaria and malaria as a disease of technological disturbance basically this understanding of technological disturbance can give you uh, immediate insights, wisdom uh, about all the problems uh, around the world uh, from daily life to global issues, all kinds of uh, problems that we are facing. Um, at the end, I will uh, give some links, including my documentary, The Connections 2021, short documentary, explaining how these problems uh, are being created by uh, our own actions, uh, most of the time, uh, by our, our own actions of disturbing the natural balance. So let's go through the malaria case. Uh, so the hypothesis, uh, according to the documentary, is that pandemics, as most other diseases, are mostly caused by disruptions to natural ways of living. And I think malaria also uh, is, is such a case. But other uh, examples might be uh, the increase in animal products and processed food consumption uh, leading to heart disease, certain types of cancers, uh, type 2 diabetes, autoimmune diseases, hypertension and ob obesity. And these are the leading cause of death in developed and developing countries because uh, these countries consume uh, the most animal products and processed food and they are mostly sedentary. Uh, but so you can just follow this link and see uh, for yourself. Um, so acquired immunity to malaria. So if we focus on the immunity, um, I think we will, we can understand better the case for malaria and how the disruption uh, happens by novel uh, changes in our lifestyles. Across Sub-Saharan Africa, where the disease is holoendemic, holoendemic means common among children, most people are almost continuously infected. And the majority of infected adults rarely experience overt disease. So they are immune to malaria. Most of the adults are immune to mal malaria in uh, some regions. They go about their daily routines of school, work and household chores feeling essentially healthy despite a population of parasites in their blood that would almost universally prove lethal to a malaria naive visitor. The vigor in the face of infection is nat naturally acquired immunity to malaria, to this, this specific type of malaria. Adults have naturally acquired immunity but infants and young children, at least occasionally, don't. Naturally acquired immunity is uh, compromised <coughs> in pregnant women, especially in first pregnancy, and adults removed from their routine infec infections apparently lose naturally acquired immunity, at least temporarily. So the frequency of infections is vital. Uh, for uh, is re required the high um, you will see that high infection frequency is required uh, to have immunity to malaria interventions that reduce exposure below a level capable of maintaining uh, naturally accurate immunity risk the possibility of catastrophic catastrophic rebound as occurred in the highlands highlands of madagascar which is highly deforested. Again, another consequence of technological disruptions in the 1980s, with epidemic malaria killing more than 40,000 people. Routine exposure to hyper to holoendemic malaria protects a majority of individuals while killing a minority. Holoendemic, we saw, it means common among children. So if you are um, exposed to 
malaria from an early age and at high uh, levels very frequently you will see how frequent is enough then um, you you will be the majority of the population will be protected that means you will have a low risk uh, from suffering from malaria and a minority usually children and uh, sensitive populations um, such as pregnant women especially first first pregnancy all the things that we saw in the uh, previous slide they will be uh, at a higher risk but to prevent to sorry the, to um, protect this this minority um, <coughs> we ha we might uh, suggest some technological interventions but we must be careful with that as my document also suggests aggressive interventions that consider only that vulnerable minority risk compromising or eliminating the solid protection against severe malaria in the majority so this is again trying to fix uh, a problem that the technological civilization created i will also try to explain why uh, this is the case um, so technological civilization created the huge problem of malaria and it's it spread and okay so we, uh, we can talk in the next slide this spread thing um, so technological civilization created the problem of malaria uh, at least ag ag aggregated uh, increased the uh, uh, impacts of it and then technological civilization is suggesting to uh, reduce this risk and it just you know when you have a hammer you see everything has nail <coughs> to be you know hammered and uh, basically it's just where there is malaria it just says okay let's uh, reduce let's kill the mosquitoes etc etc but this uh, reduct this re uh, in in return reduces the exposure of uh, populations and that prevents that that basically diminishes the natural immunity of those populations and increasing the malaria cases and then you get uh, on the news like malaria uh, epidemics and then they suggest more interventions as if this is the solution <coughs> so let's see what caused um, um, uh, yeah I'm, I'm not saying that um, malaria is not a problem or that we can't uh, control it in a way in, in some regions I'm just trying to show how technological disruptions caused malaria in some regions um, you might get rid of uh, the malaria the mosquitoes etc by killing off but uh, when you do that then uh, you just kill lots of other insects with it you just disrupt ecosystems with it and this um, disruption continues and leaks out to create other problems so we need to be aware of this as well um, <coughs> in situations with annual um, ER, EIRs it's called it means number of infections per mosquito bites received per person per unit of time let's say this infection rate um, in situations with annual infection rates of below about 10 so if you are bitten less than 10 times by an infectious mosquito the malaria prevalence rate is almost directly proportional to the infection rate and malaria transmission tends to be unstable and is considered to be of low 
to moderate intensity. At annual infection rates about 10, so high infection rates, high mosquito bites, high mosquito populations. Individuals receive multiple infection, infectious bites and malaria transmission intensity is considered high and tends to be stable. So where there is high uh, exposure, you, you have high transmission of malaria within those populations. Uh, where the risk of infection is low, so where, where there is low uh, bite rates, less than 10 bites by an infected mosquito, almost all exposed people are at substantial risk of debilitating or severe disease. And this is the case for most of the human population because I think we have settled in unnatural places where uh, mosquitoes are scarce but still exist and uh, that caused <coughs> that caused the problem of getting infected too low to have a, a sustained immunity where the risk of infection is high i think this is places where we have evolved and uh, you know, intend our uh, natural habitats, probably um, hotter places. The risk of severe disease is limited to visitors, infants, young children, and pregnant women. And you might say, uh, we want to pro protect also infants. What about young children? Don't you care about young children? Uh, we saw that uh, if you try to fix you know, the disease in youth, in young children and infants, uh, you increase the disease in the population overall. So when, when you are trying to do good by technological interventions, most of the cases you can uh, increase the problem without, even this is not your intention, this can create uh, such problems uh, unintended, uh, as a consequence of unintended consequences. Um, so this is the hypothetical exposure immunity curve. You have the risk of malaria increases, so this is the incidence density. So you have uh, if you have high incidence of exposure eventually so from zero it starts increasing let's say one or two mosquito bites per year and uh, it increases and then after a point uh, your risk of disease starts to decrease because you are gaining immunity and there is kind of an optimum uh, place where you are immune to uh, malaria from mosquito bites. And I think this is the natural exposure rates because malaria uh, existed for quite a long time, uh, millions of years, at least 30 million years. Uh, with different, you know, it evolves, it changes, but uh, this type of infection, parasite, existed uh, quite a long time. And when we have evolved with it, I think these, these were the natural exposure uh, rates. More than ton, uh, 10 mosquito bites per year. And when you increase the mosquito bites to very extreme cases, like very high, that this overwhelms the natural uh, immunity and naturally accurate immunity and just <clears throat> the risk goes up again. So there is a sweet spot here that I think humans were intended to exist. This were like in our natural habitats. And once we, uh, you know, 
use fire on all types of technology and went out of Africa to other and settled other places. Um, this naturally occurred immunity system uh, failed. And it takes time to evolve and occur such, uh, you know, immunity defenses. Uh, recommended, so you can see here pandemics, history and prevention. If you, this is by uh, Dr. Michael Greger of nutritionfacts.org, I recommend it. And this just goes to show you how we are creating the problems that we are facing today. Like with pandemics, we are creating the pandemics most of the time. We are the cause of this. And by we, I mean the technological civilization and what, whatever it is bringing. Another one is uprooting the leading causes of death, again by Dr. Michael Greger, uh, highly recommended. I mean, this again shows that we are creating these problems, like um, natural selection over millions of years uh, <clears throat> found harmony and we didn't have all these problems that, that we have today. And we were living, <clears throat> like I can mention about um, also mental health, like many people uh, seeking refuge in philosophies such as Zen philosophy, etc. They are trying to desperately to live in the moment. Uh, they are trying to get rid of like, the, they are trying to get rid of the chronic stress and all kinds of things that <clears throat> the burdens of life. And <clears throat> because technological civilization provided them with uh, uh, food and shelter, they think life is about that and they go in their daily lives playing the uh, hierarchy game that, uh, you know, like uh, their <clears throat> natural fears are <clears throat> being manipulated. Um, by mass media and they um, <clears throat> they don't even realize um, the amount of trauma that they carry and the chronic stress that they carry because they have been born into it and they think that this is natural but some people <clears throat> eventually realize that this is um, too much for, hum for humans to handle. Um, and then they say, there must be better ways of living. And they try different philosophies and meditation, all kinds of things, especially uh, those who are open-minded and critical thinkers and uh, want to improve. Uh, that they say there is, you know, life shouldn't be this, life shouldn't be uh, you know, nine to five work and meaningless and just having money and, uh, you know, buying expensive things or just, you know, study or whatever, right? There is something more to it. And they realize that maybe living in the moment and the feelings, these are the natural things that we are deprived of uh, today, most of us. And we are in a chronic stress, chronic uh, thinking, worry about the future, etc., meeting the uh, demands of you know time and location that demand you know demanding <clears throat> humans demanding be there at this time and at this place um, so these mental health issues also uh, is caused by neural disruptions and uh, we, we should realize all these things as one fundamental problem. And the fundamental problem is the disruption by the technological civilization, as I have mentioned in the, the Connection 2021 short documentary. <clears throat> uh, you can try living in the moment, uh, being wiser, etc. But whenever you do this, uh, realize what you are really doing. You are going back to your nature. These people, uh, before the technological disruptions, uh, living in tribal settings, um, 
tribal settings most of the time have a certain type of technological disruption already in them because we are as humans since a very long time uh, this just became like our uh, nature to come up with new things to, to use technology but at an increasing rate this is happening and uh, at least at the earlier stages the disruption were disruptions were not that fast so we could live um, um, approximately within the natural range um, and uh, then we, we wouldn't have so, so many issues that we are having today and the issues are becoming more and more abstract and in, invisible invisible like uh, <clears throat> let's say mental issues um, it is so vague it is so abstract uh, that you can't have a reference it, you might say it is like if someone is in a chronic stress, we don't count this as a mental issue. We, we accept it as normal because almost everybody is suffering from this. And this is the, this is the issue that we accept uh, what the technological civilization brings, all these problems, as normal. It, it is being normalized. And some of us who can see through it, we say there is more to it. And there is natural ways of living and we can um, we should address that we should realize where our problems originate from and address that in non-technological terms because we know that technological uh, advances or novelties they don't bring real solutions they are just addiction and uh, seeking short-term uh, benefits, short-term relief, um, but c at the same time causing long-term suffering at, a, at, a, at an exponentially growing rate. And you can just see this uh, happening and ex logical explanation why this is happening in my documentary, The Connections 2021 short documentary. I hope you go and watch all these things and um, so let me again make clear that uh, you can get rid of malaria in some regions by using by technological means. Right? I'm not saying that you can't, but if you do that, I'm saying you are creating more problems than you have solved. When you get rid of malaria, let's say in in some regions, you might kill off many other species or disrupt ecosystems or enable the human population that is invasive that is non-native human population in those regions uh, keep living and causing more disturbance so it is not a good thing to use technology to solve the problems that we are facing we need to look at the root causes of these problems and address them accordingly and make decisions make our decisions accordingly uh, wise uh, and uh, thinking in a bigger picture rather than local thinking that is that must be uh, our goal our teaching in schools and everywhere and if you find this video valuable please like and sus subscribe and uh, go vegan and, uh, because it's also <clears throat> another crucial important thing that we need to um, learn watch Dominion 2018 documentary and, and how <clears throat> many pandemics are caused by disruptions to, to natural balance and basically animal agriculture is the, you know one of the most disruptive and uh, animal products consumption let's say um, is a factor a huge factor in this process and <clears throat> Um, again, please share th this wisdom so we can have some more wise wise guys, wise people around 
to interact with them to better the world, hopefully.